Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard 2020 deck, this time featuring Is It. It's a combo control deck featuring the infinite combo. If we have a Raal Storm Conduit in play, the static ability saying whenever we cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, Raal deals 1 damage to target opponent or planeswalker. Now if we can put any cheap spell on the stack, let's say an Anticipate, a Chandra's Triumph or a Shock, and then copy that spell with an expansion, and have a second copy of Expansion Explosion, and cast a second expansion targeting the first expansion, then we can create an infinite loop where we keep copying our expansion with another expansion, and if we keep doing that with a Ralstrom Conduit in play, we get to deal 1 damage to the opponent for each time we go through this loop and basically get to deal infinite damage to win the game. So we need a Ralstrom Conduit, 2 copies of Expansion Explosion, and then any cheap spell on the stack. Of course we could also pull this off if our opponent puts a spell on the stack, but that's not often gonna happen. So while we do have access to this infinite combo, it's not the only way our deck can win. We can easily just outvalue our opponent and eventually burn them out with our many burn spells and maybe just a big explosion to close out the game. So let's take a look at our entire deck. At 1 mana we've got the full playset of Shock as a nice cheap burn spell. At 2 mana we've got 2 copies of Augur Bolas with plenty of instants and sorceries to go with it. So we have about an 80% hit rate with Augur Bolas finding us something useful. And then a 1-3 body can help us protect our planeswalkers or start chipping in a bit of damage. Then we've got a full playset of Goblin Electromancer which is pretty important in the deck. As you'll notice we don't have any 3 drops. So the plan is to play Electromancer on 2 and then be able to cast some of our more expensive 4 mana instants and sorceries on the following turn and just making some of our 2 mana instance and sorceries like Anticipate and Chandra's Triumph cost only a single mana also makes a world of difference so Electromancer can speed up the deck quite a bit then we also have 4 copies of Anticipate to give us a bit more card selection and then we also have the full playset of Chandra's Triumph dealing 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker at instant speed so there's a lot of options at uh, 2 mana in terms of removal. We can play Lava Coil, Jaya's Greeting or Chandra's Triumph. I will also talk a bit about this card choice later in the video. And then at 4 mana we've got the full playset of Drawn from Dreams, which we're hoping to cast on turn 3 after playing a turn 2 Electromancer, letting us look at the top 7 cards of our library and put 2 of those cards in our hand, the rest on the bottom. So great at helping us assemble the infinite combo with double expansion Ral and a cheap spell, and otherwise in the grindy matchups just a nice 2 for 1, letting us find 2 high impact cards. Then we've got the full playset of a Raal Storm Conduit, which besides enabling the infinite combo is just a great card by itself. The static ability helps us burn out the opponent, which is our primary game plan outside of the combo. And then the plus 2 lets us cry 1, which can help us find more action. And the minus 2 is great in this deck, since we've got a lot of high impact instants and sorceries to copy. We can copy a Drawn from Dreams, or else Outburst, or even a big explosion to close out the game. So Raal does a lot of things. And then we have the full playset of Raal's Outburst, dealing 3 damage to any target at instant speed. We can also look at the top 2 cards of our library, put one of those into our hand, and the other one in the graveyard, so a nice 2 for 1. And then last but not least, a full place of Expansion Explosion. Expansion's already pretty good in our deck since we can expand to copy a Drawn from Dreams or Raal's Outburst. Can also use this to copy an opposing counter spell to use Expansion as our own negate essentially. And then Explosion's a great curve topper, letting us deal X damage to any target and draw X cards. So a great way to refill. And then our mana base, we've got 26 lands including 4 Temple of Epiphany, letting us cry 1-1 one -one at Andrew's Battlefield tapped. 4 steam vents and then 9 mountains and 9 islands. And I also have a sideboard build which I'll go over in more detail at the end of the video. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. This opening hand is not doing us any favors. I just need a single blue source and the sand is fine. Eh, it's probably still too greedy. <laughs> What's up with the small T? Temple doesn't get a full uh, title. It seems like a keep and then... Yeah, I guess I'll bottom a temple. Should have kept a T temple. Electromancer is definitely what I'm into. If this is blue green flash and I have an essence capture, I'm gonna be sad, but. I think I got a jam. If it's a quench, then that's fine. Cut through it, alright. 
So I should be able to kill that with uh, shock or an outburst. So I guess the play I like here is play my steam vents untapped and then shock so I can play around quench. And then end of turn anticipates. Question is whether I attack or not. Right, negate, so I could expansion, still kill the cutthroat here. Is that something I want to be doing? Like, I could still potentially kill the cutthroat with the outburst next turn. Yeah, I could anticipate and dig for another shock. That's also an option. Or just uh, Chandra's triumph would work too. And hold on to the expansion, maybe that's better. So, alright, they don't have the fourth land, which is pretty key here. So now I get to attack. And then end of turn, go for the outbursts. That one I get to kill. If they have unsummon, they can unsummon their own cutthroat, which fizzles my outbursts, which wouldn't be great for me, but I think this is still better than explosion for X equals 1. And there's the summon. Alright. Yeah, Spell Pierce is an Ixalan, so that rotates out. Now things get complicated. I think I just main phase Augur. Alright, Shock means I do get to attack with the Electromancer. So I think I take it here. And then I'm okay trading Electromancer and Shock for an Ambusher. And if it's a Cutthroat, I guess I'll trade it for whatever Counterspell they have. Because I imagine my opponent wants to trade Cutthroat for Le Electromancer here. Not a Cutthroat, sure. No, it's not too bad. My opponent's down to one card in hand. My hand is decent if I get to resolve something. And outburst is great. Now I get to attack. If they ambush me, I get to outburst to finish it off. And otherwise I get to end of turn, outburst, untap, and draw from dreams. Although if they ambush her now, I can't do much about it. It's going to be a sailor. Yeah, I do want to still kill that before they get to activate it. Alright, that's good. Could have also taken the steam vents in case I wanted more blue mana. Alright, triumph means we get to make the same play as last turn basically. And they do have the Ambusher now, so I can copy my Triumph to kill it. I think that's what I want to do. If I still had the Electromancer in play, then I could have Cast a Triumph for one mana, and then cast Explosion for one to kill it and draw on a card. So it would have been slightly better there. Yeah, let's hope they don't have another Ambusher. I think I'm attacking. So this is probably getting countered. Maybe I should wait to have one more land in case of a Quench. If I do nothing, what happens if they have an Ambusher? I wasted my entire turn, basically. If they flash in Sailor, I get to shock it. And if they're just holding counter spells, then I might as well wait. So in most scenarios, it's better for me to wait. I'll wait. Yeah, just an anticipate. All 
All right, so now I get to play around Quench at least. But they probably picked up something useful in the meantime. Sabotage, all right. Could have been worse. So... Going into the late game, I think our decks are pretty evenly matched in terms of powerful top decks we can have. Like, we've got the Expansion's Explosions, the Ral's Outbursts, and the, like, Ral Planeswalker, if we can stick it, it's gonna be quite good. If our opponent finds an Ambusher, they can turn it around pretty quickly. Yeah, there's a nice explosion. The chip damage from Augura Bulos adding up. So, I don't think I want to go for an end of turn explosion, reason being I don't have anything good to follow it up with. Because if I tap out for a big explosion, they counter it, then I don't really take advantage of that fact. Whereas if I wait until I have a second powerful spell I want to resolve, maybe that opening creates an opportunity for me to resolve something else. And for now I'm happy just dealing once, not like my opponent's pressuring me. Also can't forget about expansion, comping the opponent's counter spell, being able to be used against them. Unsummon Augur Bolas, that's a desperate play. Yeah. Alright, so I have to imagine my opponent has like an essence capture for the Augur on the way back. But that's fine. Not gonna do anything for now. Just going to wait it out. Just want to find more expansions, explosions, irrelevant cards in general. Drawn from dreams, rolls, rolls outbursts. And as we keep building up our mana, the expansion explosion becomes more and more powerful. Although my opponent's also going to be able to keep up multiple counter spells potentially. Goblin Electromancer, so that's kind of like a threat that could start pressuring them. It's not an amazing top deck. I can probably do better, but it's also not the worst. Because it kind of forces them to either have a counter spell or some other way to deal with it. I think I'll keep it. If my opponent uses like a Sinister Sabotage on it, that's fine. Another SS Capture, sure. So what's becoming scary from the opponent's side is if they top deck a Spectral Sailor, they could play it and activate it a bunch of times. Anticipate. Should I main phase the Anticipate? I think so. If I find another Goblin Electromancer, for example, I might want to play it. I'm gonna Thrilled Mystic it. That's fine. Maybe I should Shock before damage anyway. Could have also triumphed instead of shocked to keep the shock to go face. So 
So they got some good value out of their unsummon at least. Well, we can seem to find a second uh, high impact card. I could also like upkeep this and then if they do counter it, I still have like one top deck to maybe find something good. Maybe I should do that. Just like upkeep, explosion, for x equals the maximum amount minus 2 in case of quench. Alright, that's going to prompt a response. So I think I should explosion now for, I guess, x equals 7 here, which is lethal and plays around quench. And I hope they don't have a counter spell here. Assets capture their own sailor and explosion. And there's all the goodies that we were waiting for. Well, that was a bit of a waiting game, but we got there in the end. Hand is okay, like it could be soft to a creature deck. But I've got a temple and an anticipate to help me find some interaction. Probably still keep land. Well, like our deck really needs to find land four, and then afterwards we can like start bottoming lands. Cavalcade, all right. Take the removal spell. And drawn from dreams, so... We've got some powerful plays lined up, but uh, opponent can do some scary things. Probably want to try and fear before they get a chance to attack. So they don't get to enable spectacle. I probably see a light of the stage. Land Chandra. That Chandra's gonna be an issue. I can kill Chandra by expanding a shock. So might as well just cast a drawn from dreams now. There's Ralse. I could set up the infinite combo if Ral survives for a turn, which is a big if. But maybe it's still the best approach here. Just keep Ral and a land, and then next turn I get to resolve Ral plus hope they don't kill it, and then the turn after kill them. They definitely have the tools to kill Ral if they want to. There's a chance they don't. I'll try this. Like, even if I don't infinite combo them, Ral could still be useful here. Like, I'm at 12, so there's a good chance that they just start going face and ignore the roll. Could see that happening. Alternatively, I could just roll minus and copy the shock, which then I can shock the creature, roll pings twice and can kill Chandra with the second shock, which leaves me with a roll at 2 loyalty versus an empty board with a cavalcade. Of course, the opponent can have a bunch of haste creatures, but... Maybe that's the way to go here. Yeah, I kind of dig that. Alright, so... Shock here, make sure I don't mess up on these triggers. So, trigger there. Now we copy the shock on the courier. And one on the Chandra. And killing courier is also important in case they had a Chandra Spitfire, which can deal a ton of damage out of nowhere. Yeah, they had a Scorcher instead. That's uh, 6 damage. I imagine they'll kill Ral. Alright, so... Well, we had a chance to kill them if we top-decked any 2-mana spell or 1-mana spell here. Sadly, we didn't. Or I need them to put something on the stack, I can expansion. 
So that's, I guess, the hope that they, like, attack me, but they can just attack me is a problem, so they don't have to put anything on the stack. Drawn from dreams, hope to find some interaction to keep me alive, and then next turn try and combo. So I think I need to do this. And yeah, Shock and Chandra's Triumph, I guess, will do it. When a storm sea washes the dead ashore, super gross and not my fault. So I get to kill one of their creatures, hopefully not die, but it's pretty likely that they have more haste creatures coming up here. But it's technically possible. Guess I'll use a more expensive card. Alright, hard fire, fair enough. We're in beating that anyway. Well, opponent gave us a window to kill them if uh, I had drawn a shock, a Chandra's Triumph, an Anticipate, then we could have uh, infinite comboed them. Yeah, Flame Sweep would definitely be my 75. It's just a bit narrow to have in the main deck. But in matchups like that, it's definitely a card I would want. For having a two color mana base, we've been having a lot of these opening hands with only islands, only mountains. I mean, this hand would be very good if we had an island. Yeah, probably gonna have to mulligan. But this deck really likes to curve turn to Electromancer into turn three, Rawls Outburst or Drawn from Dreams. That's what we're all about. I guess keeping Temple's not the worst. I get to play turn three. The way the infinite combo works is if you have a Rawl Planeswalker in play, it doesn't matter whether or not you use a minus two, just having Rawl in play is good enough. And then you need two expansions, explosions, in your hand, and then there needs to be any spell on the stack that's a legal target to copy with expansion. But uh, most of the time that means that you have to put that spell on the stack yourself, so either like an Anticipate or a Chandra's Triumph or a Shock. And then what you do is expansion the spell that's on the stack to copy it, and then while holding priority, cast a second expansion, copying the first expansion, which means you get to expansion again. And the copied expansion will also copy the expansion, so you keep copying expansions, which doesn't really accomplish much, except for the part that um, we have a, a Rawl in play that deals one damage whenever we cast or copy a spell. So we get to deal infinite damage. So next turn I get to Temple plus Anticipate or Triumph, based on what we're up against. Spectral Sailor, so this is blue-green flash. All right, never mind, blue-white flyers. So now it's all about finding a removal. Ooh, Electromancer. I guess I don't have to triumph right now, since I kind of want to keep this for the eagle anyway. And this turn, just Electromancer plus Temple. Next turn I get to, like, Drawn from Dreams plus Triumph. Fairy Vandal, sure. Didn't think I care about that. Yeah, I've pulled off the infinite combo a few times while uh, playing the deck earlier. Not on stream, but... Uh, it's definitely not something that happens every game, or maybe not even every other game, but... It's within the range of the, the deck, which is nice. Alright, so I guess maybe I'm better off going Outburst plus Triumph this turn. And hold on to the Drawn from Dreams. Shock seems good. I guess now I'm into just shocking the Spectral Sailor. And hold the Triumph for another Eagle. 
and do this now before they get a chance to untap and draw a card. Perfect. Just get to keep uh, killing the opponent's stuff here. This seems like a pretty reasonable matchup for our deck. They don't really interact much with the Electromancer, and our deck is just a pile of 2 for ones and removal spells. That's fine. Are they gonna, like, uh, untap their creatures and give them plus 2, plus 2, or just do some triple blocking? No, just taking damage, sure. So I definitely want to kill one of their creatures, so they don't get to, like, convoke out a Sephara. Um, but I might want to keep one removal spell in hand for an Eagle. So I guess I'll outburst the Spectral Sailor, hold the Triumph in hand. I don't think I've played a land yet. And since I've got a Drawn from Dreams in hand, this seems fine. I could take two to cast the Anticipate, I think I'd rather save two life. I guess I could triumph the Hawk. Because even if they give it plus two, plus two, it still dies. Probably gonna kill it at some point anyway. Take expansion and shock. Alright, opponent packs it in. Alright, so just... Uh, Finding those Thrall's Outbursts, the Shocks, the Triumphs with an Electromancer in play is all that we want to be doing in that matchup. This hand's great. Well, we've got the entire combo in hand, basically. Do you want to keep a temple? Not really. I just want untap lands. And against these like rampy Field of the Dead decks that don't have much interaction, pulling off the combo is pretty important since we don't want to give them infinite time to make like an army of zombie tokens. We actually want to like combo kill them as soon as possible. So this is definitely a matchup where assembling the combo is going to be easier. So next turn I can draw from Dreams, just want to find lands and then maybe a cheap spell to copy with expansion. Take it from there. Alright, so... Did draw the mountain for the turn, so ne next turn I want to play Rawl. And then try and kill them turn 5 with double expansion plus shock, I guess, works, or triumph. If I still have the Electromancer in play. So I definitely want one land, and then... Let's say they do kill the Electromancer, I would rather want to shock. Yeah, let's take the shock. Crisis for 4, that's fine. That doesn't actually kill my Rawl. What would be bad is my opponent going land 7 into Agent of Treachery to steal my Planeswalker or my land even. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Would be cool to showcase the infinite combo here. So hopefully we get to do it next turn. Cast Shock. Expansion it, expansion the expansion. Take it from there. I've been through worse. Uh oh, untapped land seven. Is this an agent? To ferry. Oh no. I'm known for my excellent type. Let's try this. Well, to ferry messes us up too. Alright, so how do I do this? They have a Teferi at one loyalty. And I do have a Rawl in place, so... 
Ral could deal one damage, but the problem is... So hold on, hold on. So if I cast a shock, I get my Ral trigger. I can let the trigger resolve, killing Teferi, and then still continue comboing with uh, expansions. So I should still be fine, right? Just gotta go full control to make sure I don't mess up. Um, shock, whatever. Submit. This deals one damage there. So that dies. And now I get to do the combo. Alright, we got there. Had they plussed at the ferry, then I would have been in trouble. And now I just need to make sure I don't misclick. Gotta copy the leftmost expansion. It's a nice uh, turn 5 kill here. Bam. Sweet. So yeah, if they had plus the ferry, then I don't think we would have uh, won that game, because then I'd never get to copy anything with expansion, since we can't cast it at instant speed. And um, then the turn after, they can easily kill my Ral and take over. So yeah, I guess that's also the upside of playing a deck that maybe people don't have a ton of experience uh, playing against. Again, a handful of uh, basic islands, not great. Probably just running below average here. Probably just one of these four mana cards, and given that I don't have double blue, probably just keep the outburst. This hand would be quite good against the creature deck. Shock into Augur into turn four outbursts. But it looks like we're up against Asper Control, so not what we wanted to see when holding Shock. At least Augur's okay against uh, Teferi. I don't necessarily expect to face a ton of Asper decks, just because the mana base got so much worse. Opponent took two damage there, so... Are they playing counter spells? Is this 2018? Alright, Oath of Kaya, that's fine. Well, I think I'm gonna try and resolve this uh, Ral. I'm sure there's ways your opponent can kill it next turn, but... Yeah, another outburst seems fine. Like, of course, if I... Want to get greedy, I could dig for the second expansion explosion to set up the infinite combo next turn, but if I just get to minus Ral and, like, copy an outburst, we're doing fine. <laughs> You're not gonna like this. And even if they counter one of them, I still get to copy. So they are indeed playing actual counter spells. I guess Electromancer is okay. They probably have removal for it that they're not going to be able to use otherwise. Could help us pressure opposing planeswalkers. Yeah, it's probably fine. And I guess I don't mind taking two, just in case. Shock plus Ral can also, like, take out a Narset cleanly. 
spell haunts. Well, now I'm less interested in the Electromancer, maybe. Although I guess I could go Electromancer, copy my outburst twice and kill the bell haunts, and just ditch a shock. You gotta be careful that I uh, don't target my opponent with a second outburst. I'll take the land since we want to build up towards a big explosion. Drawn from Dreams is perfect. Alright, so we're trucking along nicely here. Ral is within range of another Oath of Kaya potentially, but we've got a backup. We've got more land drops than our opponents. There's a second Oath. That's fine. More outbursts. I guess I could draw from Dreams, hit my land drop and play Ral. Next turn I can always like copy an outburst or an explosion. Well, double expansion means I get to infinite combo my opponent, potentially. Alright, so we'll take the land so I can play Ral this turn. And then hopefully they don't kill my Ral. Probably bottom that for now. In case they do kill my Ral, I want to dig towards another one. So next turn, if they, let's say, tap out for a Bell Haunt, I just get to Shock and then double expansion for the win. Five mana, what is this? D-Spark. Alright, that's too bad. And then probably keep up... They didn't keep up Absorb mana, so maybe Mortify. Fair enough. I guess I'll just have to cast these Expansions Explosions the hard way. So I can draw four cards end of turn. I guess I'll main phase it, since they are playing Absorb. Could also expansion the Ral's Outburst, but this seems better. It doesn't matter which expansion explosion we play, it's automatically gonna hide the one we revealed, so our opponent doesn't know we have a second one. Alright, so now I'll probably just say go. And then try and do something end of turn. Probably just outburst for now. Alright, so we're doing pretty well here. Opponent, on the other hand, is not doing much. I suspect they have at least one counterspell in hand that they're holding on to. Maybe some creature removal. Maybe another D Spark. So here I could draw from Dreams, or I could set up an explosion end of turn, could also expansion my draw from Dreams. I've got some options. Can also counter their counter spell with my expansion, and then take a roll and another expansion explosion seems fine. Attempt to play the roll. I don't want to minus in case they have a third Oath of Kaya. Otherwise I could try and get some value out of him now. I am really into current affairs. Get it? Because current uh, electricity. 
This is definitely a matchup where I would much rather have a Chandra's Triumph than a Lava Coil, for example, or a Jaya's Greeting. So not sure what our opponent's up to. Kaya's Wrath to kill my Augur Bolas. Deal. Doesn't matter what I do with my Rawl. Can even beat a Counterspell. Yeah, let's find out what happens. They're not responding, so I'm guessing they're dead. The fact that we have the third expansion explosion I think makes the combo a bit slower than usual. Giving me one additional click. Again with no blue mana. Yeah, this hand would be very good with blue mana since I get to go turn to Electromancer, turn three Rawls Outbursts, turn four Rawl. Probably got a mulligan. This is better. And then what do I bottom? I'm on the draw. If I'm up against a creature deck, I'm gonna want a shock. Although the plan is still to go temple into Electromancer into Drawn from Dreams. So I don't really have time for the shock. So I think I'll bottom it anyway. Could also bottom the expansion explosion, which would also be reasonable. In case I'm up against an aggro deck, I can shock on turn one instead. But I think I'll try this. Uh, turn one blood crypts could be scary. If they play like a butcher here, I'm gonna regret not having the shock. Yep. Well, that's the the difficulty of deciding opening hands in the dark and not knowing what the opponent is up to. Now I probably gotta just hope to trade off, if I even get the chance to do so. They might just kill the Electromancer. If I had kept the Shock, then I could have just shocked the Butcher and then waited on the Electromancer. So I'm gonna need to top deck a Chandra's Triumph here to kill the Butcher before it gets too big. Yeah, I think this is game over now. We would have found it, but now it's too late. The Augur can jump for a turn. I guess I can Triumph plus Expansion to kill the Butcher. Two for one ourselves and then still take uh, four damage. It's not great. Not a butcher. I don't think I should wait in case they have a hard fire. Don't want them sacrificing the butcher for four extra damage. So I'm just gonna triumph plus expansion. So I'm gonna fall to 7, take 2 down to 5, face a 3-3 Butcher, that's at least 3 more damage down to 2. So yeah, didn't think this is happening. So yeah, this game would have been quite a bit different if we do keep the shock there, so 
Definitely got punished for the decision. Bonto should seal the deal. Well, we did draw the triumph, so that would have answered the butcher. But uh, Bontu is still gonna kill us. Oh well, let's see what we would have found with the Drawn from Dreams. A roll and an Anticipate and some lands. Oh well, GG's. Alright, so overall... I've been pretty happy with the deck in general, and it also has access to some potentially interesting sideboard options. And I think I've been happy with the Triumph overall compared to some of the other 2-mana options, like you could play Jaya's Greeting, you could play Lava Coil at 2-mana, they all have, of course, their upsides. If you're up against a creature deck that doesn't play Planeswalkers, Greeting gives you Scry 1, whereas Triumph doesn't do anything special against something like a uh, Feather, the 4 damage from Lava Coil is very relevant. But then again, the instant speed on Triumph is also quite relevant, since we often want to keep up mana and then cast our instants end of turn, or combine Triumph plus Shock or Triumph plus Expansion to maybe kill something like a Night Pack Ambusher at instant speed, whereas a Lava Coil doesn't give us that flexibility, whereas on the other hand, I guess a Lava Coil is a one for one for Ambusher, but that also means that they get to make at least a wolf with it, so is it really a one for one? So there's lots to think about there, just for one card slot. For all the other cards in the deck, like we definitely want four Shocks, definitely want the four Electromancers, since the key cards here, Drawn from Dreams, Outburst, Expansion, and even the two mana spells get a lot better if we have one, even two Electromancers in play in the case of the four mana spells. And then the mana base, had a lot of opening hands today where we had like multiple islands, multiple mountains, no dual lands. But theoretically with 17 of each you should have one of each color in your opening hands most of the time. Could potentially like cut one basic to add another dual land like a highland lake. If we wanted even more dual lands or I guess the Swiftwater Cliffs that uh, gains one life would be the next best card we can add here. But uh... In theory, this should be fine. And then in terms of sideboard options, still kind of a work in progress, but we've got our uncounterable Curve Toppers, great against a Flash deck with niv Mizzet and Chandra Awakened Inferno, which doubles up as a sweeper as well against some decks. We've got 5 mana Raal for kind of the control and grindy matchups to have more staying power. Two Flame Sweeps against the Go Wide decks. Two Lava Coils when we're playing against kind of the the green decks with high toughness creatures. Sometimes we need to combine Lava Coil with other burn spells to take out, let's say, a Null Height Ferox. But uh, the difference between 3 and 4 can be relevant if we're combining it with a Shock, for example. And then can take out Feather cleanly, which is pretty important too. We've got Fries, which can also deal with Feather alongside Planeswalkers. So if we're playing against like a Planeswalker heavy deck, we can take out some of our a burn spells like Shock and replace those with Fries, and two negates as well against non-creature decks. And Ether Gust can delay something like a Ceratops for a turn, and can also delay a Nif Mizzet for a turn. So it does have some interesting applications. Yeah, Fry does get a little worse after rotation, since we don't need to deal with the five mana to ferry or Lyra Dawnbringers, for example. It's still good against Feather. It doubles up against the ferry since. Like, if our opponents know what we're up to, they will sometimes just plus the fairy instead of minusing, and then we do need fry compared to a cheaper burn spell. So, in that sense, fry can still be useful. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of blue and white creatures that need killing, so still probably a fine card. Could maybe go down to two fries and add a lava coil or something else. I'm not sure what other cards we would want to add to the sideboard that uh, we don't already have. But I think we've covered most of the options, like I guess Drake could be okay against the red decks. 
But I think for the most part you're just trying to kill their creatures instead of playing Drake. Could play Disdainful Stroke, is it better than Negate? Probably not. Narsus Reversal can also maybe help you assemble the combo as kind of like a, a bad expansion. But I don't think you want this in many other matchups, so probably leave this one out for now. Tails End can counter legendary spells, but it's probably narrower than just playing Negate. Murmuring Mystic could be a good card as kind of a transformative uh, sideboard plan. Same with uh, the Sahili Planeswalker, just generating some advantage whenever we cast an instant or sorcery. Could be good against some control decks. But it's pretty bad against uh, 3 mana to ferry if they can just bounce this after we've invested 4 mana into it. So it's probably just not good enough nowadays. Commence the Endgame is another card that we could consider in the same slot as like Chandra and if Mizzet as something uncounterable. That's uh, good against the blue-green flash deck. Could try mass manipulation against the green decks just to steal their giant creatures instead of trying to kill them. And if we do have like an Electromancer in play, it can make it cheaper to play the manipulation. But it's probably still too slow to reliably cast in that matchup. If we need to cast it for 6 mana total to steal one thing, that's barely going to be good enough. And then getting up to like 8 mana to steal two things is probably not going to happen enough. Graph Digger's Cage in the side could be a thing against uh, Graveyard decks. Although I don't know if we need like Graveyard Hate. Like, let's say someone wants trying to reanimate a Dracoseth. We can bring in the gates for that. Ether Gust can bounce a Dracoseth once they reanimate it, which is basically as good as killing it. So those can definitely come in against reanimator decks. Don't know if that's enough or if we need more. Possible we want just more negates, more Aether Gusts to help there. And then uh, let's check out the red cards to see if we missed anything. We've had the discussion about greeting Lava Coil earlier. Chandra's another one of those like value planeswalkers we could play alongside Sahili. Not sure if she's better because most of our powerful instants and sorceries in this deck are 4 mana, which we can get with Chandra. So probably not a great fit. Yeah, Beacon Bolt could also be an option for the sideboard to help uh, against the green decks. Although the issue there is that without opts we have a lot fewer cheap instants and sorceries to put in the graveyard. Like if we're just casting one or two spells by the time we cast Beacon Bolt that's not going to be good enough. So maybe we have to wait for the opts reprint in Eldraine before we consider Beacon Bolt. Final if Promise also not amazing without opts at one mana and without more sorceries in general. Like this card was good when we had Shard Course and Tormenting Voice to get back, but now we have a lot more instants, so I don't think Finale is a great fit here. Crackling Drake could also be an option, but again we're kind of light on a high density of instants and sorceries, so once we get opt this can maybe be in a consideration once again. The Beacon Bolt again would get better as well. Could consider Ionize or Sinister Sabotage for the sideboard too, if we want more versatile counter spells, uh, Sahili could be good as kind of a value card against control decks. And then we've got most of these other cards. But yeah, that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.